Welcome to my podcast, Shaping Your Journey. My name is Aldo Matza, percussionist, drummer, and artistic director of Cosa Music, inviting you to join in on conversations with friends, artists, professionals, and experts in the music world. Today, I have the wonderful opportunity to catch up with a, a dear friend who I've known for many, many years. We've collaborated in the past... Uh, over, over, <laughs> I won't say the number of years, but I, I'm so thankful that uh, you had the time to, to join me today. Guy Saint-Ange, man, thank you so much for joining me today. This is great. It's a real, real pleasure. It's, <laughs> it's nice to see you, man. It's funny because your name came across my screen and I said, wait a second, Guy, he's perfect. He's the guy for this kind of conversation. Especially, you know, in, in my personal history, and and you know, someone who's a uh, has been an active musician over so many years, and then you kind of, when you're not in the center stage or in the in the line of sight, you kind mm -hmm. of you say, whatever happened to, and all of a sudden you're there, and you're still active. So before before we get into the conversation of shaping your journey. Just tell us a little bit about where it started. What was the spark that started that fire? That's a long time ago. Uh, I was 10. Uh, I, I was from Montreal, and uh, my parents moved to Laval, which is just, you know, 20 minutes. And uh, in the house that my, my dad bought, there was a piano there. And uh, the, uh, the owners uh, who sold the house, they couldn't take away uh, uh, take the piano with them because they, they had finished the, the, the basement, you know, so it couldn't fit. Anyhow, so we, we ended up having a piano there. Uh, and uh, my, my parents noticed that I was always on the piano. And uh, so they, they uh, had fixed, you know, tune and everything. And I started to, to play and discover uh, music by myself, uh, not knowing that I had a, a, the gift of a good musical ear. You know, nobody knows when you're a kid, you don't know. Right. Uh, and, uh, but my parents, they, they were not musicians, but they were listening to a lot of music, good music. And, you know, at the time it was like big band music, but Cuban music too. Uh, big band, Whoa. like uh, okay. Mondo Ross, Xavier Cugat, you know, those big bands and everything. So, uh, so uh, I was listening uh, listening to radio, for example, and I was trying, of course, to, to find the, the little thing. And uh, it all started there. And I guess, don't remember when I was 10, but I guess I went crazy about, uh, about music because all my life uh, I acted like I'm a crazy, crazy guy because I'm so passionate. Like, so when I don't read music, I write music or I listen to music or I, I, I you know, I can't stop. It's in my vein, it's in my, you know, it's it's a beautiful thing. So it's not. Uh, I, it started at ten, and, and uh, I started to play music. And now I'm sixty five, and I still play music. It's, it's it's the most beautiful game, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's one of those things that uh, thank God, like you 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 got in the way when it came at you, and uh, you look up years later and you say, man, are, are we lucky? <laughs> are we lucky or what? <laughs> yes, and we have to acknowledge that because it's a gift you know the, the to to have a the sense of music inside it's the most beautiful gift and if you have uh, the chance to be at the right place at the right time with that gift and then you do the things right you know you can have the most beautiful life you know absolutely, it's amazing. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 no i totally agree with you and and i as i always say to everyone i i personally don't believe in coincidences to me there's no such thing um, you 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 either show up or you don't, and these are decisions you make. You go to that place or you don't, you know. And when you do go and you're ready, things happen. You know, it's funny how the phone rings, or funny how things happen, or you end up on projects. It doesn't find you. You have to be kind of there, and you always gravitate to those things, and you make those decisions. And every decision has a consequence. You know, I mean, yeah, we could yeah. all write all kinds of stories with that. And I'm sure after after you were learning, I mean, did you study, you studied music, right? Well, I it's thought. a strange thing again, because uh, I'm a self-taught, but I still study music and I have so much score, music, orchestral score <laughs> there. I, I have like, 
uh, record. So I studied, first of all, when I was young, I was studying without knowing it, even because I was <laughs> listening, listening, listening. And uh, I started to listen to, you know, to, to, of course, pop music, but then classical music. And, the, and then the, the jazz, the jazz took my life very strongly. But uh, at, at one point, my mom said, okay, um, maybe I was like 13. I, I started to write my little things, you know. And she said, okay, so now maybe it's time for you to take lessons, piano lessons. And Monsieur Marquis, I remember, he came to my, my house and he said, well, can you play something for me? So I played something for him. And he went to see my mom and he said, it's too late. It's too late because he had his own fingering, had his own technique and everything. But I tried, I mean, for 20 minutes. Okay. But that was, that, that wasn't important for me because I was learning so fast and so much that at one point when I decided to go, uh, because I had no choice, you know, I was only doing that. So my, my dad said, okay, you want to go, you want to be a musician? Uh, so you will have to go to school. I said, okay. So I went to L'Ecole Normale de Musique in Westmount for a year and a half. But that was, in my case, it was complicated because since I developed my ear very, very much for, uh, let's say, seven years, uh, I, I, they, they had to put me in a higher level all the time. And I was I was playing all kinds of instruments, nothing well, but good enough to express myself and to discover music through those instruments. So what happened is like when I, I, I did the audition for that school, they said, what do you play? And, well, what is your instrument? I said, well, uh, I write music uh, now, but... But uh, okay, piano, you know. So she said, okay, can you play something? So I said, well, I'll play something that I wrote. So I played and she was smiling because she was looking at my fingers. Uh, and then she said, she said, well, uh, wh where did you learn to play? You know, because I can't, I can play everything I hear in my head. Right, right. No problem. But, but you know, I don't hear. Uh, it, it's not, it's, it's honestly, I'm more like the Bill of in type of close my eyes and play jazz or, or, you know, Jarrett like solo thing. Uh, I'm not into uh fast bebop anyhow, or, or Oscar Peterson, you know? So right. I, it, it's, it was always enough. And if I had a problem to, to play what I hear, then I was working on the technique, you know? So anyhow, the, when I went to the school, uh, the, the piano teacher laughed a little bit. So she said, okay, uh, do you have another instrument? I said, well, I can I play guitar, I play bass. Said, okay, can you play? So I started to play with some of my songs. And well, then, then they said, I said, uh, I play percussion. Because I, I had fell in love with the vibraphone. And this it started, is, this it started is, back then? Oh, yes, yes. I had a little you side know, because, you know, the, the funny thing is that I knew you as a piano player and as an arranger, and we worked together many times. But the first time I saw you play vibraphone, I said, wait a second, where did that come from? Because you're, I mean, you're a great player. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the, the instrument that I, that I have the uh, love and hate relationship uh, for, <laughs> for 50 years, but it's still my favorite instrument. So, so when, when I say, well, I, I play for so they said, well, play something. So I took my four mallets and I played. And the teacher, the percussion teacher said, okay, I'll take him. So I, I you know, then I played timpanis. And the, but it was complicated because I had to take the bus for three hours to go because there were, I, there were no timpanis at the school. So at the beginning, I was working on technique on timpanis on two tables wood tables you know this doesn't make sense anyhow so uh, after a year and a half of of that m the director of the the school she said um, hey mr saint onge everything is cool in your career i said yeah uh, you, you 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 i heard you have a new record company uh, yeah uh, and and you you're arranging for a lot of people yeah so she said maybe you should leave school <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. So she so asked, I, yeah, I went home and I said 
uh, hey, Dan, uh, the director, uh, she, uh, she told me that I should leave school and, and, you know, just take care of my career. And he looked at me with a smile, but he knew. He knew because, you know, at the time I was a drummer in a big band and he was driving me with my drums kit every <laughs> weekend and every concert. So he knew and uh, the band leaders there at the, at the the big band, he was telling me, telling him uh, what he thought about me. My, my. So um, and then I was in the L'Orque Symphony de Laval as a timpani player. Wow. Uh, yeah. And so, of course, I had to learn to read but all all the orchestrations and everything, you know, it's so easy. Imagine how lucky we are. Let's say I want to. Uh, when I, I bought a Berg Lulu lately, so you go to the store, you buy the CD, and then you buy the the parts, and then you sit, and then the way I learn is like you listen, and then you hear something amazing with a pencil. You just do this, and but you keep on listening. Oh. Oh, this, mm. and then after that, you do have a nice tea, and you look. What? Why is that so beautiful? And then when you do that for 40, 50 years, you you have the tools, and you have the the, the courage and the guts to say yes, I can do whatever. You know, I took yeah. a lot of chances in my life since I'm self-taught. You know, so uh, but I said yes to everything because I, had, I I was confident in the way I felt about music and it, it worked. So I'm very sure. lucky about it. No, and, and, you know, I've always enjoyed uh, <laughs> your orchestrations. I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you came in and did some orchestrations for when I was playing with the Montreal Pop Orchestra, it was that TV yeah. orchestra. You came in and did some really different orchestrations and we're all going, wow. The harmonies of this, and I'm listening to that. I'm saying, where did this guy come from? And and every time you would do something, it was always different, always colorful, always had a different uh, imagination. And of course, you you know you uh, with all the instruments you play, and and the vibraphone always surprised me because uh, I mean our common friends like David Friedman. I mean we're friends, and we're yes, yes, fans of David. yeah. And you, I, ha I, have, no, go I, ahead. I, I know, I know that you like anecdotes i have just one very beautiful um you know that muscle they never made extension for to go to the low c you know i know, we all I, know that. yeah <laughs> i tried then, yeah. <laughs> you know when i started you know i was a fan of of uh you know of course, of course friedman dave samuel and uh, mike manieri and everything and but of course gary burton gary burton and right remember on one album i think it was a time machine or the groovy sound of music, there was a picture of an extension of a vibraphone that goes, but it was a Master M75. So all my teens years, I was looking at that picture, I was like, how come I never saw a vibraphone goes there? Then after that, I realized that Master made that specially for him, one set with one extension of an M75. Imagine the yeah. beast, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I, at one point, I'm in New York, and I, I go to see David Friedman at his apartment. And I saw five bars in the corner on the floor, the gold bars. I said, what's that? He said, well, it's a long story. Uh, uh, Musser made that for Burton with a big extension. And since Burton, like he was touring with the M55, uh, he, he lent me this. And at one point, I, I did a, a gig. And I, so I left the, the vibraphone in the van. But of course, you know, you never leave the bar <laughs> in, in the car. So if, and then, no, but somebody stole the vibraphone. In. So you had to call Gary and say, man, I'm so sorry. My insurance will pay this. But, you know, somebody. But I guess he forgot to say that he still had the bars. But I guess that's not important. I guess it's just like he, a mistake. <laughs> Imagine the thing. I went to see Burton in Montreal with a picture of my vibraphone because I bought those bar and a friend of mine made a, a beautiful frame with an extension and I, I sold, I was soldering uh, the, the extra pipes, you know, for my room. But yeah, so I went to see Gary and said, look, Gary, look at this. And he looked at me, he said, 
what's this? I said, it's your bars. It's your bars that Master made for you. And he looked at me like, if I stole them, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but he was, I could see, I could see in his, in his good face. One. So I said, oh, no, no, no. So I told him the story. And I guess that now, I guess maybe poor David, maybe he, he had a phone call the night after. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I, I'm very lucky to have those bars. And I, they are important emotionally for me because there's well, only one. Well, that's a bit, that's a big story because we're always talking about having an extension. I'm a, I'm a Musser Ludwig endorser. And for years, I was trying to get them to at least go down to the E. You know, yeah. so that you can do any anything you can do on guitar, then you can do on marimba or, or the vibraphone, especially. Yeah. And they just wouldn't do it. Um, but does yours go down to a, an F, or what's your lowest yeah. note? That it, my, mine goes to a C. Oh, the C. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's okay. like the Yamaha, like Ber Bergerot. They, they made some too. You know? Yeah. Now they've so, all come out with that. But you know something, yeah. Guy? What I discovered recently, uh, only. When, when was it? Uh, I think it was last November. I went for one day to the PAS conference. I, I, you know, we didn't travel for a couple of years. So finally, when, I, when we were able to travel, I just went everywhere dashing just to see people in 3D again. Um, <laughs> but I remember seeing a vibraphone that went down to the low C that was actually made in the 30s. It was Musser himself who made it. Oh, Whoa. Yes, and I had no idea. And they explained to me that it was one of his inventions that went down to the sea back back then. And I don't know why every it's most different. others were would go down to the F, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. And I know that Jerry uh, Tashfor, uh, he was uh, a master endorsement. Now he, he changed for Bergeron. Bergeron yeah. because uh, they, they provide him with the vibraphone he always dreamed of. I I had, uh, until two years ago, I had bought the Yamaha four octave, which is, this is great, like from C to C. Right. Okay. And uh, finally I sold it because uh, it, it's, it was a great instrument. But of course, Yamaha, it's, uh, they have their sound and Musser have their sound. And I'm more Musser. And I never use the high, high notes. <laughs> Uh, you have to take a walk to go and hit those notes. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I, I wanted to say, oh, during your whole uh, career of, of performance, I mean, you were playing, you were doing TV shows. You've, I, I mean, I, I don't need to explain. I mean, some people who don't know who you are, I mean, you've played on uh, David Bowie's albums when, when he was in Montreal at Moran Heights recording that big studio that we yeah. had for years. And I, I, I love that studio. It was one of the best. But you played David Bo uh, Bowie, uh, and you did some Celine stuff. You did some, a lot of uh, Quebec, Quebec artists, for sure. I remember that. You were, like, busy day and night. But some of these guys would come in, and you played uh, marimba or vibraphone with, with David Bowie? With David, it was marimba. Okay. But uh, then again, you know, uh, of course, it's, it's very nice on a CV. But, uh, you know, they call me, and they say, uh, would you come? and play marimba uh, for a session in Marin Island. I said, yes, of course. I went there and it was David Bowie, which is, was a kind of, I was very impressed. But the thing is like, <laughs> you know, as I you know, if I would have been a guitar player, they wouldn't have called me because there's like, maybe at the time, maybe there was like 600 guitar player in Montreal, but right. marimba, well, then, then you're lucky because there's maybe two, three guys, four guys. Uh, at the time we were playing marimba, let's say, uh, improvise a uh, jazz type of thing, you know? So uh, I was lucky then. I was lucky. But I, I took it. And it, it was a great experience. Yeah. Now that's, I mean, playing with, with people like that and expanding. I, I mean, you've... I mean, you've navigated through all kinds of, of of playing, but what always surprised me personally was your vibraphone playing and and, and having that M seventy five that you have with the gold bars, <laughs> you know, nice yeah. always always, and and the other thing that was always amazing, and I'm really happy that you did this, and this is a, a personal personal note is when Repercussion did the album. Les Fantasy Classic in your studio yeah. up up north by the yes, lake. Yes. Ah, mm -hmm. that was what a studio that was. 
That was amazing. Yes, it was a dream that I had because you know I have to tell you about uh, my my TV year because uh, I started to to play piano in a restaurant at the time, okay, and then uh, the a singer came to sing, and at one point a producer said I want to do a record with her, I said, okay, can you write two songs? So I wrote, I wrote two songs. We went in a in a studio. We did it, and then somebody heard that record and they invite me to do arrangements for other sessions and it started like this like this and at one point uh, a friend of well not a friend of mine at the time but a guy called me and he said i'm going i, I have uh, written a song a jazz piece uh, a song for pierre lalonde which was a very popular singer here uh, it, it, the name of the song was swing city and he said uh, i heard you play uh, can you come with me and we will introduce that song to Pierre Lalonde. So I said, okay, I listened to the song, so I went to play. And Pierre looked at me and he said, how come, because I, I, maybe I was like 21, 22, he said, how come you can play like jazz thing like this, you know, you're not into rock and roll like all the other kids, you know? So I said, well, you know, I guess that I, I listen to all kind of stuff. So I became his pianist, then I became an arranger. So for that session, I had full big band, five sax, five trumpets, five trombones, three French horns, and a swing wow. section. I mean, it was amazing. To, and, and But then what happened is like somebody called at, from CFCF, a TV, TV uh, station in Montreal, and they called Pierre and said, hey, we have a TV show for you. Do you have a band leader? He said, yes. So I started to be a band leader on TV. And I remember at that show, it was a piano show, and I had a string quartet, three brass, wow. and a rims. I mean, 21, 22 years old. So I was writing all the time, writing, writing. And I did so some other TV shows. And uh, then after, I, I was, was started to work on a show called Ad Lib. And right. that, was, that was about the same thing as, let's say, Johnny Carson or, or uh, Dave Letterman. Okay, uh, it, the, the music was kind of important there, but it lasted for nine years, nine years. And then I did other stuff. So, so that's I wanted to mention that because in those nine years as a band leader on TV, uh, I was a uh, first of all, you get people know you a lot because you work with all the artists from Europe, from the States, they were coming, you know, so uh, they want. They started to want to me to write for them or to produce them, so I decided to build a studio. That's the studio you came in, right? Okay, beautiful. And the, yeah. it was uh, oh yeah. I mean, you know, I spoiled myself with this studio, but I, I could afford it at the time. But it was a good thing because finally I produced kind of close to a hundred hundred records, uh, you know. So uh, and it helped me a lot, and I. I I um, I had that record company that I uh, it's it's called the Silence Record, which was the first audiophile company uh, record company in Quebec. Uh, it was Gold Records at the time, you know. Right. Uh, but I did everything that I had to that it won't work. So I produced jazz, classical, African music, uh, uh, Brazilian music. So it, it, of course, yeah. it didn't sell well. Uh, so I closed that company at one point, but it, it, what an experience to have a studio like that. You know, yeah. I remember uh, I had a chance to work with great, great musician. Mark Johnson came for a session. Uh, yeah, I mean, you had also, you also had, I mean, uh, I remember Claude Champagne was the engineer on, on our session, right? Remember? Yes. And, Claude, and so I remember good. like the acoustics of the room were unbelievable and, and we wanted to do something really special. We said, you know, let's do an album of only classical works, ma mainly mallet works that, you know, you, most recordings that are done because they don't sell, because it's so, such a very fine line of, of you know, potential, commercial potential. It's never really recorded uh, well. It's, you know, the production, but with this, you allowed us to, to make a real production of this. And this is one of my favorite records. You know, time, Rachmaninoff, time remember Rachmaninoff vocalese? Oh my God! Oh. You know we were playing. This is I still hear it today. I mean, I still have the record and I listen to it. I said it's amazing. 
what we were able to do, you know. You know, with, when you have great guys, I mean, like you, you care, right? And then you have Claude Champagne, who's a, 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 you know, a really amazing engineer. And everybody, we took the time that it that was needed to make it sound amazing. So I want to yeah. thank you. Now well, I get to thank you. <laughs> well, it it was a great fun to 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 look at that those all those instruments in the studio. It was percussion everywhere. <laughs> I remember it was beautiful, beautiful. But the, the, you see, you, you talk about the sound in the studio. The ceilings were high, and they were not parallel to the floor. Of course, I designed it in a way that it was it sounded like a like a concert hall, but controlled concert right. hall. And uh, I, I was able to record like forty strings there, and wow. it sounded yeah. good. You know? It was a great time, great great time. Yeah, and I, I sold it uh, five years ago. Wow, really? Okay. So the, the room yeah. still exists because it was overlooking the lake and it was I mean, just a, a magical place, that, the kind of place that, that I mean, you, people only dream of to record. Um, I remember you, you did a, another recording with Sekus Kamara, right? Remember the African? Uh, yeah. Yeah. We, we percussion. worked with Repercussion. We worked with him. And then shortly after, you produced his record there. Yes. Genius. Yes. Genius. And he died about three months after that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. Oh, but this guy, another anecdote, you know, you know, I told you before that I play a lot of instruments, but nothing, you know, I, well, let's say well, not more than that. You know, I, I express myself correctly with for my standards. Uh, but I remember, I thought that I, I, I had a good sound on the Jambi. I thought I had a good sound. And I thought that my studio <laughs> sounded good. And I remember <laughs> Kamara, he looked, they call him the Cobra. He, he looked, he's, he's built like full of muscle. And oh. he, he had a little bag, like a sport bag and his jambi with him. So he came in the studio. He looked at the place. He unzipped his bag. He took the jambi. And all he did was like, spy. was like, I never heard that. And it was like the most amazing sound. And then I, I, since I, I, after that, you know, I, I asked him, like, can I see your hands? And it was like wood. It, it, it's amazing. I remember that, that record. It was nice. It, it was on my uh, record label, Silence Records. That yeah. was a great record. Great record. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and since, I mean, I had lost, kind of lost sight of you. I mean, I've been traveling a, a lot and, you know, we everybody goes their ways and things develop and evolve. And it was really funny when I kind of came back around. I mean, you've been busy all along and you've been playing, you know, in different situations and developing. Uh, you know, it's like like a steamship. It just doesn't stop, <laughs> right? And then, and now you... And then when, when we uh, kind of met up and I said, you know, what are you doing now? And I, and you bought a hotel in Ile Au Coudre, just north of yeah. Quebec, in, as far as I'm concerned, the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's a, it's a nice place. But Ile Au Coudre, like a hotel, and you have a, a concert series, so you've created your own environment. Ace, you got my vote. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, well, thanks. But uh, I still feel very, very much inside me that I have to share music. Because uh, honestly, if you look at my life, music gave me everything. You know? and, and it started with a gift. Imagine, you know, you have a gift and that gift gives you the, the career. You know, it's not only music. When you were a band leader on TV, I, I was a band leader on TV for probably 15 years straight. Okay. It's the people you meet, the, 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 you know, musicians, of course, singers, but then, then you meet like actors, you meet politicians, you, you have the chance to, you know, sometimes I, in a conversation, we talk, and I said, oh yeah, I met, I met him, and they're like, what? You went, you don't realize, because it was your life. For 15 years, you know, I remember, I remember what the, the, one of the researchers on the show, you know, she called me and said, Guy, there's a guy who came for the jazz festival and uh, his agency he wants absolutely to, to be on the show, but I don't know him. You know, he's a harmonica player. And, uh, and I said, what's his <laughs> name? Boots Tillman. You know, like, oh God, you know, 
So there's full of surprises like this, but you meet a lot of people. And and now I I since my life was so beautiful and still very beautiful, uh, I I really have the feeling that I should promote music and give music to people. So uh, what I'm doing here, it's it's concerts. Fridays it's um, classical music. Uh, Saturdays either songs and Sunday it's jazz. And it's a, it's a free contribution. There's no tickets. So people come and we, we do a great, great show. And it's just like they discover, a lot of people discover jazz and discover classical here. It's, it's some people cry, some people dance, you know, it's beautiful. And that's, that's my way to say thank you, music. You know? Yeah, no, it's amazing. I mean, the, the, the day that, uh, you know, we, we understand what the, the whole power of music, the whole power. Sorry, I'm fighting this cold, so I'm trying not to cough. Okay. But the power that, that this gives us just to be able to, to share with other people, you know, from around the world. I mean, it's universal language. It's, it's everything. And just to be able to communicate with anybody on the planet at any given time on a level that we can. I mean, why would people cry? Because we're uh, uh, touching their emotion because often, especially today, I mean, today is, is a different story because we're so pulled by technologies and other developments that we forget the the most important thing is, is that is, you know, your soul, your, you know, the actual person, what is going on in their minds and their well-being. And their well-being means you have to feed that. And, it, and you, you don't feed that with coins or, or, or dollar bills. You know, that's emotion, emotion, music. And that, that speaks. That's, to me, it is. I totally agree with you, Aldo. The way I see it is like, let's say you take a microscope and you look at my hand. Uh, you know, a hundred thousand dollar microscope. So you will see uh, the, the 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 tissues, and you will you know. But you take a million dollar microscope, so you will go and, and you will see cells. But you take a billion dollar, and then you will see. At one point, I talked with about that to a physicist, and he agreed with me. At one point, we are only energy, vibrations, energy. Interesting. Yes. But yes, we yes. are made the same, the same thing as the music. So. I have an anecdote fast. Uh, I was conducting a big symphony orchestra. Uh, there was like 70 musicians plus a choir of 40 in, uh, in Russia and in, uh, uh, I don't remember, like Seoul and everything. But I remember in Moscow, I was conducting. I had 110 people in front of me, extremely happy because we were playing like great music, you know, there were singers and everything. In my back, there was 8,000 people wow. extremely happy. And I remember something happened to me. Okay, I have goosebumps just to tell you, okay? Uh, I was, I, you know, I was conducting. And at one point, there was a hole. And then the singer was singing like, Vive. And then I started, and I had like trills of violin one, violin two going down. So I was looking at her and and then suddenly, I'm, I swear to God, I was not there anymore. I, I was not physically there. I felt, yeah. I felt that I was somewhere. I was happy. It, st it stayed for five, five seconds. I opened my eyes. I saw the violinists there. They were crying. And I don't know, I was in shock. So after the show, I went to see the singer. I said, hey. I felt something so much in that song. And she said, oh, yeah, thank you. Well, that's great. So I, I felt, okay, she didn't feel it. So I was going to my to my lodge, and there was two people from the production. And I, they said, oh, thank, bravo, Mr. saint -Ange. it was great. I said, I, I, lived, I lived something amazing. And she looked at me, and she said, is that, was it in Vivre, the song Vivre? And I realized, Oh my God, something happened. So I guess that maybe, you know, the vibrations of the orchestra, they just passed through my vibrations and then it went there. And that's why I feel that sometimes I play piano here, I close my eyes, okay? And then I open my eyes at one point and there's like 10 people there. And, and some of them are crying, some of them are hugging. 
it's just the power of vibration and energy, which which we are. Yeah. yeah. And it's all positive. It's, that's the amazing oh. part of it. You know, the only downside, I think, to be a musician, but maybe it's too personal, but I have to say it is just, just like there's not a lot of room Let, when you are very busy and you're touring and you're because at, at my, on my TV years, my TV shows were at night, but I was making records in the day. So there's not a lot of room for relationships and family, you know, so. Uh, I, I feel that I, I've I had a great life as a musician, but you know, family is hard. It's hard when you're a touring musician or you're oh yes. You're crazy. <laughs> yes. Well, you know the the it, and I feel that that it's not our fault because it's not a job. It's it's a passion. It's what we are. And some women that woman that I was with, with uh, they, they tried to change me. They tried to change that a little bit, but you can't. No, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot change the color of your eyes, man, or the color of your hair. <laughs> you know, it's it's part of you. And uh, but but uh, you know, what a great career. No, I mean, no, for sure. On on the personal level, I mean, these are things that either come your way or not. And decisions we make also allow for things to happen or not. I mean, I I got married late in the day because I was touring so much and, and <laughs> I mean, day and night. And then all of a sudden you look up and you say, my parents gave up on me, of course. He said, oh, he'll yeah. never get married. And, you know, running around and, and, but the day that somebody, that you prepare yourself and you make that decision to make those changes, but within, I mean, but nobody, can come in and make any changes to you. Somebody comes and and adds to you, and you add to that person. Now That's we're it. talking. You know, now you're talking. It's it's like being in an orchestra, being in a a, a band. I mean, everybody has to be part of the 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 whole result. And you know, you can't have a a louder drummer than the bass player. You everybody has to be in in harmony. It all has to work together. And you have to be on the same page, on the same <laughs> in the same key. In the, you know, it's it's a. I mean, we can go on and on, but sometimes things don't happen because of, I mean, many many reasons. But I mean, you were so consumed probably by the music. I stepped away for a minute sometimes, and I was I was very fortunate, you know, to to run into somebody who, uh, Yola and you know, my wife, who at, mm -hmm. at one point I just became. My friends were worried about me when when I met her because all of a sudden they didn't recognize me. They'd say, uh, "You better call Aldo. He's 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 acting really strange recently. I I think something happened to him, because that's not that's not Aldo. You know, we know Aldo. That's, that's, he doesn't behave like that. And I'm going around, you know, like that. Aldo's in love. <laughs> and it and it was crazy because I I just didn't see anything else. It was like a train hit me head on at high speed. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. and but then you. Uh, I wonder if you. I'm sorry. If you would yeah. have met her when you were, would have been like like 20 years old, uh, that's it. You know. Yeah. It's because you yeah. don't. You. I mean, as you know, you you don't decide to be a musician. You are. Yeah. You are. And if at one point somebody decides to be a musician out of the blue, uh, for me it's strange. You know. Uh, you know. Let's say you're you're an accountant, and then at at 40 years old, okay, now I'm, I will learn flute and I will become a musician. Yeah? For me, it's very weird, you know? But I think the, the personal investment, it, it pulls you. I mean, you have to have the stomach for it and, and also that uh, mindset of, of um, the, mystery, the mystery of each day. You, you know you get up in the morning and this is what I do. And then the, the three-second question Am I going to remember anything today? And after three seconds, okay, now I'm 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 fine. But this mystery that happens in our minds, I know I went through that. And each morning, I'd have the three second panic that <laughs> all this all that I do, I would forget, and then I would have to go to work or something, <laughs> you, you know, find another way. But it's it's something that pulls you, and as you say, you don't really have a choice in that. I mean, you have a choice, but it's this uh, sub subconscious that's telling you this is what you need to do and this is your place and you'll always find it 
and you're always where you should be. That's my philosophy. That's it. That's it. And and you have to use the music for for the right, you know, for outside you. Uh, you know, some people they use the, the their talents. I, I feel that to to get something out of it, uh, that's a good thing. Uh, but maybe it doesn't doesn't stay for a long time. Uh, if if you have a feeling that okay, I have that gift, so I have to to share it, to to give it, to give it. I think that it's it lasts for forever. You know, the, that's it. Because I mean, at the end of the day, I mean. There are seven notes, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then all the rhythms and combinations, just like words. You can combine a lot of words, but we all understand them. So it's infinite, mm -hmm. but they're universal. And they've always, you know, they've always been there. And they're always going to be those same notes. So same, uh, the rhythms that we can combine or create and, and what we create with them. And the challenge that what can you do with this, you know? Somebody challenges you, like somebody says, "Can you write me uh, this song?" It's it's the same thing. You get this challenge, and you say, "Okay, given this, what could I do with it?" So, let me see if I can push it over here and try this. Yeah, to make it interesting. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. it. Yeah, and you're always challenging yourself. You're always open to that, and and you don't rest. Your mind doesn't rest, right? Which is a good thing. That's why I I I love. Uh, arranging, I love composing, but uh, I have a lot of fun arranging as much as composing because you you can change things, change harmony, change time signature. Uh, so it's there's a lot of um, creation as much as to write from scratch, you know. Right, right, yeah, yeah. No, and that and that's interesting. Which which takes me to an, another uh, part of, of your life and and this I, I never knew about you except you mentioned it that you were a watch fanatic clocks well yeah I'm a, I'm a watchmaker I'm I'm you know pocket watches I make all the parts myself I'm a, <laughs> I'm a crazy uh, I have a big workshop but that's a long since a long time 40 years that I'm doing this uh, I have my uh, my big setup here, and uh, but it's just a, it's a passion. You know, I always feel that uh, l'art de la fugue, the art of fugue of Bach. You know, for me, what it does is like my my uh, the side of my my brain that is very sensitive, emotional. Uh, it's completely excited when I listen to this, but my my mathematics side is very excited when I hear the fugue. You know. And I feel that watchmaking is the same thing because when you work on an old watch, pocket watch, like 18th century, you know, and you, you dismantle it and you look at it, the complication, it's amazing. You, you're like, whoa. And then the beauty of the finish, even on parts where nobody sees, you know, under the dial. And, and, then, and then you can cry, you know, to, it's art. It's, it's the same thing as the few. It's art, extremely complex music, but then it, it's the best food for me. Uh, it's the best food. That's why, for me, Bach is so important in my life because yes, yes. the contrapoint is a food for me. So it, it, for me, it was very hard to, to get interested in, in music when the left hand was doing harmony and there was a melody there. For me, it was like, come on, what happened after Bach? You know, they, they all started again. You know, Bach was there, and then okay, well now we have to start again. So uh, it was hard for me to understand, but uh, my my music uh, uh, attention was got by by Wagner and then Debussy, Ravel, of course, and Stravinsky and everything. But there's a big part in the middle. For me, it was it was like, come on, come on, guys. You know, Bach did something so amazing. Come on, do something. Of course, there's exception. Of course, you know. And sometimes, you know, when you're young, you think all oh, this. I remember him. Imagine I will say it because I want to punish myself. Uh, I said when I was 16 that Stravinsky, it wasn't good, but now he's my favorite composer. You know, so you know, it's it's all the question of you learn, you learn, you don't start, don't stop learning all the time. No, and, and also often you're not ready for certain things or certain concepts or certain approaches to things. 
Uh, but as as you grow and as you uh, develop, I mean, then uh, you have a you develop also a different kind of appetite, or you're actually standing in a different place and you see things from the back end. I mean, uh, I mean Mozart. I mean, every note is like meaningful. There's no one note that doesn't belong there. It was not a passing note. It's like a, a note that is part of that structure. It's like brick on a building. Ave Verum Corpus by Mozart. I, for me, it's the most beautiful piece I've ever written. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and, and I think, you know, once you realize uh, that um, ev- the meaning of things and everything should have meaning and your place in that, like they set the bar, you know, Bach, Mozart, and then, you know, many people all along. And the same with watchmaking. For me, it's like Italian food. Uh, or espresso. It's got to be... <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be right. Otherwise, there's no point, <laughs> right? Yeah, because everybody has got the time on their phone now. So if if you want to, if you're interested in watches, uh, but it's it's a world. It's a world. Like every everybody who comes to my workplace, and uh, I put them on the microscope and with nice movements, you know, from 1820, <laughs> they they just they can't believe it. They can't believe it. Yeah, it, it's an art. But also, I, I think what's important there, too, is the appreciation of things that are amazing and long-lasting, that have, that have meaning, you know? Mm-hmm. Things that have meaning then start, those things appeal to you, and, and it, it's part of your identity also, you know, whether it's music, I, clock somebody said, uh, somebody said that what takes a long time to do, to make, lasts for a long time. And it's the same thing in music, you know? Uh, there's... The, uh, I mean, classical music, you know, if you look at pieces like, uh, you know, L'Oiseau de Feu, Le Sacre, Du Printemps, you look at the score at Wagner, you know, Jesus. <laughs> you, look, <laughs> yeah. you look at this, I mean, it took time to do this, but it's like, it's a ma- major art. Yeah, and, but, but then again, you know, you can write something, a, a team, a jazz team, and you will play it for the rest of your life, and it took you 15 minutes to write. Uh, so who knew? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's right. But how is it? Um, I wanted to ask you, how is it uh, living up in uh, Ilo Cotre? What's the name of the place? Havre Musical de Lille. De, yeah. de Lille, which is Lille. An, an island. It's not exactly an island, but it's uh, approachable uh, right in the uh, St. Lawrence, right? No, it's, it is an island. There's no bridge. You have to take No bridge. A boat. Ah, okay. No, no. Uh, and, then, and then we live on the, on the west side side of the island which is like a small a small piece like this and uh i mean i fell in love with that place so much and it's it's begging for music and we are surrounded by the sea you know because it's at the point it's it's so 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 beautiful and i'm i'm writing now a, a symphonic poem about the saint lawrence river called moliante Gok, which is the great river in Abinaki's language. Okay. Uh, and uh, I've been working since three years on this piece. It's a long, long period of time. But uh, but I try to put in music what I feel. And it's very difficult to write something uh, about the sea and, and without being influenced by, you know, the Bussy and, and all those great, great, great. So it took me a year to find my language because everything I was trying at the beginning sounded like Ravel, Debussy, you know, because right. I, I, I studied those pieces so much that now I had to go away. But of course, when you try to go away from something, it's always, there's always something will stay, you know, because they were such genius musicians that they, they knew, they, they knew how to describe or to make you feel, you know, so... That's yeah. interesting, and and out there, I think, I mean, you have there are whales that you see clearly in that area, right? Yeah, the, the, the white whales, the the, the beluga, yeah, uh, it's salty water, so we have like uh, all kind of animals there. It's it's really, it's a very beautiful place. Uh, I, I I never, I, I it's, it's, it will be a, our tenth anniversary here, and uh, I never, you know. Uh, regret my decision beautiful it, beautiful but i bought it like a like a stupid guy you know i, <laughs> I, I look at the place i heard it was for sale 
I said, uh, how much? And I said, okay, I didn't visit any, like a plumber, uh, you know, on the hotel, you know, out the electricity, like a plomberie, whatever, you know. I, I just like, oh, I'm not, I, I loved all the, all I cared was like, where I will put my place to make music. And, and, uh, yes, and yes, then, yes. But, but I was okay. Everything was okay. So, uh, and, and it's, uh, there's a lot of people come then music everywhere again. Yeah. Nice, nice. Well, I mean, that's, that's fantastic that, that you did that because, I mean, when you, when you have a vision, when you see things and you can be, you know, the instrument of change, uh, I think most people would appreciate that. And especially when you have the, that kind of energy as, as you have, you know. Um, you know, in things that I've done, for example, I've, I've always brought music to wherever I went and everything I am come, just comes with me, whatever the territory is, right? As you did to this place, yeah. you know, yeah. they probably never heard music, but now the, there's, a, there's more music that they can, than they can handle. Maybe in the winter, maybe not, but. <laughs> you, you've done so much in your career, Aldo. It's amazing. You, you touch everything. You have that thing now that is very, it's a precious thing for, for make, you know, to have people to, to be able to, uh, to hear musicians and their life and everything. Uh, it's amazing what, you, what you're doing now. Congratulations. It's very beautiful. Thing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. For, for me, it was important because, you know, after a while, you know, you're connecting with all the people that you've dealt with all your life. And, uh, you know, traveling the world, doing, you know, how many times can you, can you do that and, and still be excited? Then you say, okay, what else can we do to, to connect more people, to, have, to, to give value to things? Um, you know, without recognizing borders, without recognizing anything, you know, uh, except the human being and the human condition. You know, what makes us, what makes us interesting, what makes us interested, and putting people together introducing people, creating like in, in the course of workshops and, and festivals, you know, you'll have in the same room. I mean, I had Neil Peart and then Steve Gadd comes and then everybody who comes is part of this, this family experience. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you have conversations and it changes your, your vision of how things could be. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then you see, you see that the the greatest are the more modest too. It's it's a very, very beautiful thing to see. Yes, As, absolutely. And and some of us, you know, it's important for us to understand that at the at the end of the day, there's the human part that's the most important. The rest, of course, you have to take care. You have to make a living. You have to, you know, you have to buy groceries. You have to do all of those things. Pay insurance. <laughs> you know, all those things we yes. have to do. But the human thing, you know, at the end of the day, said, how, how do you feel? You know, not what, how much money did you make, how much, that you take care of automatically because you're smart and you do, but how did you make somebody feel? And that makes the difference, you know, That's and it. then for as long as we can, right? And, and I, I mean, this whole thing, connecting with people and sharing the stories and inspiring people to, to see what others have done in their way, because you're not gonna, no one is gonna do it the same way. But to see, you know, all those different people coming from different areas. I mean, for example, in your case, you were not a, a, a studied musician from the conservatoire or, a, you know, a university level of the PhD. No, but you did have this, this creativity and the decisions you made brought you to this place and are continuing on that, you know. So it just, yeah. uh, it just sh uh, shows more possibilities, expanding your own horizons. To me, that's fantastic. And I was, uh, <clears throat> I was in the right time because when you're passionate, like I was when I, I was a kid, I had access so easily to everything. And I thought, I, you know, a hundred years ago, to listen to the great composers and to have access to their score, it was impossible. But me, I had a chance to do this. And when you are extremely curious and passionate about music, you learn. And, you know, like, for example, Peter Erskine, which is like, I'm, I'm such a fan. You know, I play, I play drums since like 50 years, 60, I don't know. But, you know, to be able to see him play in color, in HD, you look at him, you look at his smile, and you look at his hand. And, well, 
in the in the thirties, in the forties, young kids who wanted to play drums, they were listening to 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 some an old seventy eight, you know, and it was hard to hear. You know, it was complicated. It was hard for us. We are lucky. It and and the young people. Did, I, I'm sure you noticed that. You know, let's say forty years ago, a name like. Jaco Pastorius came and everybody were like, whoa. And now, uh, last week, I was listen, looking in the in the, uh, YouTube and I, I see those kids, man. They play like, oh, whoa, you know. Yeah. But, you know, I then I realized, well, they had a chance to see the great genius of Jaco. They, they could see his hand, could see the position that they... And and then they become like it, it, it's possible for them. And, but before a hundred years ago, it was like, you know. Well, oh, that's amazing, isn't it? Done. I mean, oh, we're lucky. We're lucky. Well, pushing yes, those definitely. envelopes, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. And then I mean, yeah. it, and it all goes with you know, someone does takes it here, and then the other person will take it there. And if that, but if this doesn't happen, that one doesn't happen. So everything exactly. has has a sequence, right? That's a nice way to, to to put it. Yeah, exactly. You have to. Yes, it's yeah. I will I will remember that. I'll, <laughs> I mean, that's the way yeah. I, I I see it. I mean, the things that uh, technically people can do. I mean, on all levels. I mean, technology is the same thing. I mean, something has to happen first, and then the next thing. And yeah. everything has its time, you know. And then what people do with it is just the imagination. You know, then they see it, but you can't see it unless that other thing happens first, whatever that is. That's why you really have to check those guys before you. That's uh, right. I, I remember when I was young, I I had a band called Quebec Sax, and one of the sax player he wanted to play free jazz, and he was like sixteen. <laughs> And uh, but he couldn't play any any Parker. He couldn't play any uh, you know Ben Webster, whatever. I mean, but he wanted to play jazz. Or, and in my head, I was like, "Oh, there's something wrong there." You know, if you want to play like this, you have to know your stuff, you know, because otherwise, there's no value. It's, you know, there's no foundation. There's no ground. And it's like you know, people studying Cuban music, studying African music, studying classical Indian, any of those. If you're really serious, you have to go back, way back. And the further you go back, the more forward you you go. Now yeah. that you know where it's coming from, otherwise it has no foundation. This it's like the Empire State Building on stilts. <laughs> you know, that, it doesn't work. <laughs> That's it. Doesn't. Yeah, That's I agree it. with you. Yeah. So what are what are your um, Plans, not plans. Well, what do you, besides working on that symphony, what are the kinds of things that you're looking to do and continue doing as you're expanding now that you're yeah, still young and active? I, I just finished an album. Uh, it's a tribute to Bill Evans, uh, nice. and I play I play all the instruments on it. Uh, and uh, I was lucky because I made I made a session. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's a it's a funny thing, but. Uh, you'll see how, how lucky I am. I did this, a session for a well-known singer uh, with a big band in a 24-piece uh, string orchestra, okay? And she called the producer and she said, you know, I decided to change the key because I will sing it differently. So he called me and he said, okay, we have to do it again, but, you know, uh, uh, three, three tone ups. So I said, well, you're crazy. It will cost you a fortune, you know. Uh, I, can't, I can't do this with my computer. And he said, no, it's okay. So everybody came in <laughs> for one song, but it's three-hour sessions. So we, I recorded the song. Then I had my string section there for an hour and a half. They were paid. So the day before, I arranged four songs, Bill Evans' song for that great Lush Orchestra. And, and I conducted. So that singer, without knowing it, she paid the strings for my record, which is very, I'm very happy. It sounds really, really good. And it's, it's, a, it's a very humble tribute to his genius and his, his uh, everything that he explored, you know, conversation with myself, or when he uh, explored the rhythm displacement, or of course harmonically, which totally changed my life when I was young. When I, yeah. 
So uh, that will be out soon, I guess. Nice. I'm, I'm anxious to hear that. I, I remember Bill Evans. What was that album that he did with um, uh, Miles Davis with strings? I'm trying it, to remember. With, with Miles Davis? With was it strings Miles or, or, or who was it? I'm, I'm just... Well, he, this... he did something with Klaus Ackermann, Symbiosis. He did uh, another one that was called uh, Bill Evans with Trio with Symphony Orchestra. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There was Pavan de Fauré on this one. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Now, yeah. now I remember that. I have that record, and every once in a while I listen to it. And he did that, what, early 60s or late 50s? I don't remember. Yeah. Creed Taylor produced Creed. that record. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Creed, the whole Creed Taylor thing. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That's it. It, it, was a, it was a beautiful record. And the, the other one uh, on a German uh, label, uh, it's very beautiful with Klaus Argerman. Again, symbiosis. You should listen to this. It's very nice. So uh, th that tribute album that I'm doing, uh, I, I tried to touch. I touch everything. But, you know, like, for example, very early, which is a, a swing waltz. It's the 7-4 Latin on my record. Nice. You know, so it's all, all kind of different. It's, a, it's an album of love, really, a love for the man and for from for his music yeah you know he he did a lot i mean he turned a a lot of heads and still i mean listen listening to the stuff that he was doing and i think a lot of those players i mean even people i remember we had jimmy cobb who played on miles davis kind of blue album yeah, yeah. he came out to cosa for one you know one year at, at our camp and and i was watching him you know with interest because he was the way he was playing and people would ask, I said, what was so special about what, what he was doing? I said, just, just listen. He, he's, <laughs> he's, he's not moving, but the music is moving, that he's moving. He's moving the music with, it looks like not much is going on, but listen to the sound that's coming out of his hands. And, yes. And it's amazing, you know. And he, he, he really surprised me because I, I remember the sound check. Every evening we would have concerts open to the public and each artist have like a 15, 20 minute set. And I remember he was doing his sound check and I'm talking to his technicians and then all of a sudden I'm hearing this sound in the back of my mind and my, my, my brain is saying, where does that sound, where's that sound coming from? We don't have drums that sound like that here, <laughs> you know, this, this week, you know, and I'm, and I'm looking over and it's like the sound, the blue note sound is coming in my mind and I look over and he's playing a drum set that was totally a different drum set before he sat at, you know, like it sounded like blue note. He's playing like that, that album uh, with Miles Davis. And, and I said it to was... somebody, check this out. You remember those drums didn't sound like that 15 minutes ago. Jimmy yeah, Cobb yeah. sits there and it sounds like Jimmy Cobb. <laughs> That's a mind blower. Uh, Miles was, was a great casting guy, uh, like a movie, uh, like in a movie, you know, the, you, you choose the actor for the project, the film you right. do, and, and Jimmy Cobb was the perfect drummer for Kind of Blue. It was the perfect, and Bill and Coltrane and Cannonball, you know, ev everybody was perfect for this record. Yeah, that's, that's amazing when you think about it. Like, it's so, so well thought out. I mean... And I mean, we still, I mean, we still get inspired going back and listening to these things and you revisit and you say, oh my God, what was that? Yeah. Oh, and yesterday I was listening to Chick Corea, now he sings, now he sub. And uh, my God, like I me, mean, Roy Haynes, it, it's, it's so clean, it's so special. And it's, it's, you know, it's, it's about maybe probably 50 years old, 45 years old, that record. Yeah. And with that flat ride that he had, like, it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and he's still playing. A friend of mine just told me he saw him play in New York recently. He's got to be like 98 or 96 or something. I mean, like, he's up there. He's, uh, it's he's, very, very, yeah, and I, mm -hmm. I tried to I tried to get him to come to Cosa, but you know, he says I I I don't I don't do well talking to people. He says just just listening. I said just come and play. <laughs> you know, of that course. Did, yeah, yeah, that would have been nice, but that that didn't. But guys like, like that who are just so inspirational, they're so deep. And, you know, you have guys like that in, um, in other kinds of music, like Changuito in Cuba, for example. 
You don't know what planet the man came from and what, you know, divinity comes through him as a direct line. Because it doesn't make sense what, what the person is doing, but it's it's incredible. And you're looking like sideways. You say, where did this come from? You know? <laughs> It's like Horacio when he's doing the clavier with his feet. And then not only he, he can do that like fluently, but he start then he start to decompose and play and, and, and like triplets there and everything with a big smile. And you look at this and what an inspiration. Like the guy is beautiful to see. So in every kind of music, there's like people like that, like Hilary Han on violin, for example, you know. I, I, I'm dying when I, I listen to, to her. And, and all kind of music, all kind of poetic songs, you know, lyrics, it's, it's so connected. When it's well written, yeah. it's connected like this with the music. It's an art form, beautiful. There's so much sensitivity everywhere in, in the, the musical art form. It's, it's amazing. And you know we've we've been so fortunate to be have been part of that. I I always say I am so happy to have been born where I was born and when I was born. Like this time, it couldn't have been better, you know. And to have been part of that and, and continue. I mean, for as long as your eyes are open and you're walking on your own feet, I mean, yeah. we are ge so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> we are yeah. lucky, and, and like we have to acknowledge that. And we have to to push the kids to continue, because yeah. I, of course it's hard sometimes. Me, I, I had it uh, very easy, but I know, I know I had it easy. But I know that too that like uh, opportunities like to be a band leader on TV those days it's very 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 rare. It's not the you know at, when I was working as a band leader on TV uh, at the state the TV station there was like maybe ten bands. You know, seven, ten bands. Now there's none. I mean, sometimes you see like somebody with a keyboard with a computer. Uh, it's uh, it's sad, but it will come back. I mean, it's a, yeah. you know, we have to push the mu musicians now. Uh, the the young musicians, they are amazing, 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 and they are lucky too because they have they can look, you know, on on the internet. They can hear those great players. They can see those great players. And it's a school, it's a university just there. Yeah, and being inspired. And, and I think those of us who care to, you know, to have these conversations or play the music or, or record things, have it out there and archive it and, it and make it available. It provides information. It provides a reference point for those that, that come after. You know, here's what we did, you know, your turn. And, and, it, and, and we encourage it. And it's, and it's good that we're doing this. That's it. And to, to, they have to feel and to know that they have to do it uh, uh, outside of, you know, music is made to, to touch people. Uh, so don't take it on you uh, to, to achieve something uh, only for you. You know, you have to, uh, like all those players that, I, that, that you received and all the, those great players that I hear talking everywhere in the world, they, they are inspiration because they... They are giving people. They they are, yeah. That's it. They, they like to share. It's yep. beautiful. Yeah, and like, yeah, exactly what you're doing now. You know, you could you could watch TV now, but now you're doing this. It's amazing. This is a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I I wanted to thank you so much for for taking the time, and we could do this forever. But I'm really happy that uh, we reconnected, and I you came across my screen, and I, and I again I say wow, key he's. He's someone I have to have this, this conversation thank with, and I, and I thank you for that. I'm very happy that uh, I, I finally, you know, we, we got together again. It's been a long time, but uh, I've been watching you. And oh, <laughs> thank you. And I, as I always say, to be continued. Yeah.